design and it's make and take tuesday this is a little weekly series that i do where i introduce a project made with something new from my stash i also do throwback thursdays which is where i use something old so today is the i'm going to introduce you to prima's painted floral collection this is a brand new release and i am loving 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 these papers the colors, I think it was the colors that grabbed me. They are just so rich. They are just really, really beautiful. Look at this, all these beautiful shades of coral and yellow, um, these great stripes. And of course, here's the cut apart page. All these great little sentiments really beautiful floral with a wonderful grid on the back this is another cut apart and then another cut apart i'm wishing that instead of the if you're a card maker i'm wishing that instead of the 12 by 12 i had gotten the 8 by 8 i think that would have been a better choice for me but i didn't see it in 8 by 8 so we're going to make a slimline folio today let me just straighten out my camera here and this is a super easy one because there's no cutting for this folio. This is an 11 by eight and a half inch piece of paper. And we have scored it at four and a quarter, four and a half, eight and three quarters and nine. And this forms our folio base. And then you just fold these sides to make the spines. And you've got this little neat little book with a flap. And it's amazing what you can get done in here. So let me go ahead, gather some papers, and we'll go, we'll start lining the inside of this folio. Okay, we're going to get started with this little flap, and I'm going to show you how to turn this into a really neat pocket. I have a three and three quarter by eight and a half inch piece of the signature page inside the cover, and we're going to take our adhesive. We're going to place adhesive on the top on the right hand outer edge and on the bottom and then we're going to let's see yes then we're going to adhere this just like this just as straight as you can get it and we've got a little tiny bit of white peeking in but that looks fine Okay, so now flip this, and you can see how this has formed a pocket with the inside part of the flap. So on the inside part of the flap, I had this scrap left over along the header, and I cut this to just about two inches, a little bit under two inches, and I left the branding strip on. And we're going to glue this down on the flap. And I know I can hear you saying, but there's a hole. Yes, we're going to fix that. Now, is that an easy way to make a pocket or what? So there's that. Then I took another little scrap and we're just going to line up. Let's see. Just like this. Oops, along that bottom edge. And we've covered the hole. And so now we've got this really neat pocket. And you can make a little folio to go in here. You can tuck little tags in here. You can tuck tea bags in there, whatever you want to do. So then the center panel, I use the back side of the uh, Painted Flowers main page. I really like this lattice and this is four and an eighth by eight and a half and we're just going to glue this in the center just like that and you can stamp a sentiment here. I also got the journal card, so this is a great place 
to bring in those journal cards and add a sentiment, whatever. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm mostly just showing you how to do the base. And then over here on this side, I cut a long piece of our painted floral. This is four and an eight, and I went 12, but it's actually more than 12 because I left the header on the top to kind of tie all these blues together. So I cut the pocket height to two and a half. And then with what I cut off, I made these little gussets. And we're just gonna put little pocket gussets in here to line the sides. It's just a really quick and easy pocket. And then over here in this pocket, this would be a lovely place to tuck in a honey stick because it's tall with a tea bag or a bookmark would be beautiful. Um, photographs are nice. So this goes right here like this. So you can dress up the inside of yours however you like. Once I've finished mine, I'll come back and show you what I did. But you've got the basics here. You've got a pocket here. You've got a side pocket here. You can put a little folio in there. And you've got this wonderful wonderful center panel. Um, so that is that. Now we're going to go to work on the front of our card. And for this, I cut a four and a quarter by eight and a half inch piece of that orange grid pattern. And then I cut from the other side of it. This is actually four by eight and a quarter. And then I just stitched this panel on on my sewing machine. Then this is two of these three by four journaling cards. They have this stripe in here. And I needed it to be longer. So I'm using this gorgeous, beautiful board frame from Rene Bouquets. And I wanted it to fill the entire space to make like a little shaker cover here. All I did with the frame is um, heat emboss it with a fine uh, detail embossing powder. And you can see it is gorgeous. I wanted to pick up on the gold foiling in the patterned paper. So I wanna lay out a little design on the inside of my shaker box. So I can see I want this to go right about here. And once I get it placed where I want it to be, I can go over a little bit, I think. And this is just a process. You just have to be a little bit patient with yourself as you get everything sort of set. That looks good. So I'm gonna straighten it out. I'm gonna come in with my adhesive. And because this is gonna be a shaker frame, I wanna make sure that it is glued down there well so that my sequins and beads and such don't slip back behind it. So you see, I just kinda of did one half then came back and did the other. And then I've got these really pretty flowers that I fussy cut from that fussy cut page. I wanna tuck, now that I know where everything is, I can tuck these blue fussy cuts back behind the beautiful. And these can come down like this. So like they're cascading from the other side of it. Pretty, pretty. And I've got a blue flower. To go over the top here. And I want these to kind of overlap. And a blue flower to tuck in. Let's get this down first. This is like a floral branch. I just need to figure out how I want it to. Okay. I'm 
going to put my branch down first. Like this. And I didn't press that down because I want to bring in my other blue flower kind of layered back behind it like that. All right. So I'm just going to press these down well. And now for the shaker elements. This is um, Buttons Galore and more. This is called Shades of Chambray. And I don't want this really, really big button in there. I'm going to put some of these in here. I'm taking out the really big buttons. I find that they don't, um, they can cause problems. So I take the really big ones out and you can use those in other ways for buttons. That looks pretty good. It's enough blue. And then this is, I forget what the name of these are, Butter. Isn't that a good name? So I'm just going to sprinkle some of these in here. And then I've got these sea beads. I'm just going to kind of make a hole for these so they don't go bouncing all over my tabletop. I think that should be pretty good, guys. Maybe a few more seed beads. So once I had heat embossed, my frame. I glued a piece of um, acetate on the back. Some places call this acetate sheet, some call it clear card stock, some call it clear acrylic, but um, I'll link in my blog post so you can find a good source for it. And then these are 1 8 foam strips from scrapbook.com. I love these guys. They make fantastic shaker frames and you can see I've done three rows. I'm going to show you a little trick. Do you see how I've got this little opening right here? I'm going to come in here with my dries clear and just seal that and I go around and I just check to make sure everything like here's another little hole. See those beads would come right out of there but the dries clear seals it. And it looks like I've got another little gap right here. And one right here in the corner. All right. But now we're good. Okay, so I've got my sequins in place. I've got my florals in place. I'm going to line this up side to side. And let's, I think we're good. I think we can commit and press this into place. And I'm putting um, not light pressure, but I'm not being overly aggressive because um, I don't want my, uh, I don't want to break that delicate little frame, but look how pretty that is. I could have gone with more sequins, I think, but that's good. That's, that's beautiful. So, um, from Renee Bouquet's, I have this really eclectic bee lady. I, there's just something about her. She tickles me. So I've added foam strips on the back. And since this had the bee beautiful sentiment and all the flowers and stuff, I thought this was a really fun accent. It's just a little bit different. Sometimes different is really good. All right, I've got my glue gun. I always like to put additional 
adhesive on the back to help it stay. And we want her just like this. Okay, that looks really good. How fun is that? All right. Then I had another one of these little resin crowns and I just buffed it up with a little bit of Little Birdie Antique Gold Metallic Wax. I'm gonna put down my dries clear, dries clear on the back of this crown and it's gonna set right up here, just like that. And it'll take a minute or so for that to set, but once it does, it won't go anywhere. I don't recommend that you use hot glue with resin because it doesn't tend to hold. And then also from Rene Bouquet's, I have this really neat bee. And I can't decide where I wanna put him. So just for the time being, I'm gonna set him there while I work with my flowers. Just give me a second. I've got this really beautiful light navy taffeta ribbon and I'm going to take some score tape and I'm going to go right about here. I'm leaving the ends long because this way, actually I think I like this better. I like the shine, and this is a double-faced satin. Also, I think light navy. All right. So put that one down. wrap this around. See how that makes a nice neat edge? I really like doing my ribbon that way. And then this is quarter inch score tape. I'm going to go in the center of this. And then I'm going to come in with this navy and gold plaid and go right across the middle. And again, this reinforces the gold foiling and it picks up on those blue flowers and the blue background. I really like the way this looks. And then wrap this around the back. So pretty, right? I'm going to set my B aside because I, I know I'm going to use them. I just don't know where. All right, so now flowers. I've got, these are all from Renee Bouquets. And I've got a really nice selection here. Just gonna dump these out and we can start playing. I've got these blue ones. I've got some yellows. These are kind of a honey tone. And that ought to be good. I don't think we need any more.
just adding the bows now. And I'm tucking them under our little blue roses like this. And once that glue sets up, I can come back and fluff them and adjust them. But for right now, we don't want to mess with them too much. And then I think what I want to do with my little bee Yeah, let's do him right there so it looks like he's flying into the field of flowers. That's pretty. So I'm just going to let that set up a little bit. All right, I'm going to finish the inside and then show you so you will have some inspiration. All right, guys, here we are, all finished. And I have to say, I really, really love the way this turned out. I made a couple changes as I was finishing things up. I took the bee off and then tucked this fussy cut flower cluster over here. I just felt like it balanced the frame out better and it also made the bee stand out. And I pulled the yellow baker's twine out of the bow clusters. I didn't, I ended up not liking that. I added the ribbon closure before I glued the cover down. So you just wrap it Leave a length over here that's as long as you want it to be. Wrap it around the naked folio cover and um, secure it with score tape. So that's how you do that. And inside, here we are on this first flap page. I just clustered up a bunch of these little fussy cuts with one of the three by fours. This is an old, old Webster's Pages crown paper clip that I used to tie into the crown on the cover. And that's the little flip page over here. I made, that's our pocket page that we made together. I cut down a three by four to decorate it. And then this little folio is, I think it's three and three quarters. Yes, three and three quarters by six and a half. And I just covered it with the stripy paper and a little scrap of the blue floral inside. I used the butterflies and the green to line it. And that just lives in the pocket like that. So then this flips open. Over here we've got our little side pocket that we made. I just put this little fussy cut flower here to cover up the back side. And then I took a little scrap of my navy paper. This is, again, this is seven and a quarter. And the width was five and five eighths, and I went ahead and scored it at two and a half to kind of make this little cutaway, and then lined it up with some scraps, put one of the little ephemera pieces in there, so this lives in the pocket. You can put it in this way so that the butterflies show, or you can put it in this way so that both the butterflies and the cutaway show. I kind of like it this way, and then the cutaway is a surprise. Then in the center, I made one of my little lateral waterfalls. I used one of the fussy cut flowers as a pull tag. This is three and three quarters inches wide, and I cut each of the panels five and a half inches tall. I just love how these work. Of course, you can just put in a standard waterfall, but these little kinetic waterfalls are really fun to pull the tab and have all the pages flip. So anyway, this has six panels. And that is the folio all finished up. I lined the back with the orange stripy paper. I just love how, I love this combination of the blues and the oranges. It's always been one of my favorite color combinations. So that is it for me today, Make and Take Tuesday. Kathy Clement, again, we were working with uh, Prima. I think it was watercolor flowers or painted painted flowers. All right, guys, I'll have a linked supply list on my blog, and I will link to my blog in the description box. Thanks for joining me. Please give this video a like. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love to have you along. Now, go get your craft on. Bye. Mm -hmm.